Good morning. Good morning. We are live. God bless you. I pray that you are doing well this morning. Um, let us pray. You know, we have such a merciful God, such a great God. And I'm going to give you a few minutes to chime in uh, this morning. Hallelujah. But God is so good and he's so merciful merciful and uh, his mercy endures forever. Uh, let us begin in the worship this morning. Uh, we're in our third day of awe with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we love you. Father God, we magnify your name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, Father God, uh, we want to stay in awe with you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Let us understand the scriptures. Uh, you know, Google is great, but when the word is in your heart, you understand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Our God is most merciful. He is an awesome God. I'm trying to get the music started this morning. That's what's interesting about live uh, broadcast. Praise God. And so while I'm giving you time to uh, find us live, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory uh, be to the name of the Lord. Father God, we thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. We thank you. We adore you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being so awesome. Thank you for being so wonderful. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So hold on a second. There we go. So for some reason, the uh, receiver was off. So we pray that we get sound now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen again. There we go. We have sound. You know, it's amazing that during this time, yesterday, uh, the camera and the sound wasn't on uh, the computer, and then now the sound here, and we're talking about sounding the trumpet. Amen. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We worship you. We magnify you. Father God, we thank you that as Christians, uh, as believers, oh Father God, and the Jewish Jesus, oh Father God, that there are Jews that believe in Jesus, that believe in the Messiah, that he's coming back and the trumpets will sound. So Father God, let the meditation of my heart and the words that come out of my mouth match the word of god father god let me teach your ways let let me teach uh what is now and what's to come father god let us as christians continue to grow we have to get beyond just clapping in church and liking a nice choir but really go deep in the word so that there is change we can't just fill up a building so, Father God, we see your power during the pestilence that hit this land, just like in the days of Hebrew and in and, and he, uh, Egypt, where the Hebrew children um, were um, able to leave Egypt um, after Moses said, let my people go. And Father God, we as a church, we've lost our way in terms of what we are supposed to do. Um, Father God, we've lost our way. Yes, grace uh, abounds, 
But Father God, let us not just depend on grace as a crutch not to grow. So help us to teach the scriptures and allow us to grow uh, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, because Jesus talked about the Old Testament when he walked the earth. Paul talked about the Old Testament uh, before the New Testament was written. So Father God, we thank you that we walk in your power. We walk in your word. And we thank you, oh Father God, that we must understand that, that a big church is great. But Father God, your concern is it's time for big change. So that's mean, uh, as you say, uh, uh, the heavens are rejoicing if one changes, gives their life to Christ. And the church has got to get back to teaching the word of God, teaching about the second coming of Christ, teaching about there is a heaven and a hell, and teaching that your grace abounds, that your grace is sufficient, and your mercy endures forever. So Father God, we're coming to you on Rosh Hashanah, which is known as the Hebrew New Year, 80, excuse me, 5781, which in 90 days on our calendar is 2021. So 90 days before we say it's the new year, we're reflecting so that we can have the best 12 months of our life. In Jesus name we pray, amen and amen. So I want to cover um, uh, something major that uh, there are significant scriptures in the Bible regarding trumpets, sounding the trumpet, when the trumpets were sound. You know, when kings came, you know, the trumpets were sound, amen? There was a sounding of the trumpets. I'm gonna put the music on pause. I finally got it going, hallelujah. But sounding the trumpets. And so God gave uh, Moses specific instructions in regards to making a trumpet for the 12 tribes of Israel. So he had to make, God uh, gave him instructions and it's in the word to make um, two different uh, trumpets, two different horns made of silver. When both horns are sound, that means that all the people come to get instructions from Moses. And if one horn was sound, that was only the leaders that would come. And so when kings, uh, you know, the introduction, introduction of kings, uh, there was a sounding of the trumpet. Amen. So we have to realize that there is a significance in the sounding of the trumpet. So we did that on Friday night, which was the beginning of Rosh Hashanah. When what does Rosh Hashanah mean? Rosh, O-S-H, Hashanah. What does that mean? Rosh means head. And then um, Ashana means, Hashanah means um, of, the, of the year, head of the year. So the beginning of a new year. That's what it means in Hebrew. That's all it means. Amen. So we want to be ahead of the new year, you know, and who wouldn't want to do that in order to be prepared for the new year. You know, some people seek out the prophetic and this is um, a very prophetic where you're seeking out how to um, uh, reflect and to introspect of things to come or things you want to change or you want God to change. Now, one of the things that is different um, in the Old Testament and the New Testament um, and uh, with uh, the Jewish uh, traditions is they believe that um, in Rosh Hashanah that they start looking at what they did wrong and what they did right. And if their good deeds outweigh their bad deeds, then their name wasn't going to be written out of the book of life. And so that's a whole nother sermon. Um, but basically, uh, when Jesus came, he, he said that, you know, you can't get into heaven with good deeds, that you can only, the only way you're going to get to the Father is through him. So God isn't counting what you did. You know, you know, so when you say, didn't I cast out demons and your name, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? God will say, get away from me. 
you never knew me. God wants us to know him and his son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross. So why do we stop and reflect uh, for the head of the new year, Rosh Hashanah, is because we want God to know that we are serious about our walk with him. We are serious about being in awe with him. We are serious about understanding that there is a second coming. And so uh, look at um, part one of 10 days of awe, or day two, it may say, and then you will uh, get uh, the scriptures in the Old Testament where God says that you will sound the trumpet, okay? So, and that was to remember uh, on Mount Sinai when the people feared the Lord, when he actually came down. And because of the horn was so loud, they feared and trembled him. Amen. So you have to realize that in Revelations, it talks about the seven trumpets. And there, the, the, the first angel, the se second angel, the third angel, the fourth angel, the seven trumpets that were sounded. So let me go to the scripture. Amen. Putting on my readers. Praise God. Okay, so, um, and I, I'm going to uh, be all over the place. So, because um, I'm not going to go over all um, the angels. But even if I just start at Revelations, uh, Revelation chapter 8, verse 8. The second angel blew his trumpet and something like a great mountain, a burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. Okay. So, and then I'm going to skip to uh, the seven angels. Revelations chapter eight, verse six through eight. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were, were thrown upon the earth, and the third of the earth was burned up, and the third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and the third of the sea became blood. Hallelujah. So this is in the New Testament. So the trumpet is going to going to sound. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Giving God all the praise and glory. And so I, I spoke to you about where God spoke to Moses, and it, that's in Numbers chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Make two silver trumpets of hammered work, you shall make them, and you shall use them for summoning the congregation and for breaking camp. And when both are blown, all congregations shall gather themselves to you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. But if they only blow one, then the chiefs, the heads of the tribes of Israel shall gather themselves to you. So that's what I just uh, shared with you. So that's the scripture uh, to speak about that. And so yesterday I covered, or, or part one, I covered Leviticus uh, chapter 23, verse 24 through 25. Um, amen. Uh, which is saying, uh, uh, this is where we do this every year that you shall observe the day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with the blast of the trumpets, a holy convocation. Hallelujah. So in Judges, it talks about how the trumpets were blown and there were 300 trumpets. And the Lord set every man's sword against the comrade and against all the army. And the army fled as far as uh, Beshita towards uh, Zerera, as far as the border of Abimelara, excuse me, Abim by Tabith. Hallelujah. Okay, so they fled when the trumpets were sound. But I want to get to a specific scripture
and we're in Matthew chapter 24, and you can read all the way to verse 51. But Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to a point to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, you see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will be not one left here, not one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the close of age? And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads the way for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and they led astray. And so Jesus talked about um, his second coming. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, okay, meaning stay awake, and, uh, meaning those that are awake and then the dead in Christ, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. And I talked about the seven angels and the seven trumpets in Revelations, where the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and will change and shall be changed, where this perishable body must be on the imperishable. And this mortal body, excuse me, this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass to say that it is written, death has swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? So remember, when the trumpet sounds, the dead and Christ shall rise in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. So we need to make sure we understand why? Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. But we do not know, excuse me, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, that's where the trumpet is going to sound, will not precede those that have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So this is a time to reflect. There will be a trumpet sound. Amen. But it's saying the dead in Christ will rise first and we will all be caught up. So that's, remember what I read to you. In 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. You know, so we, we believe that in a twinkling of an eye, God is coming back. You know, we have to think about what is going on in the world. You, you're thinking about the pestilence that came through the, the land. And, and, and we are all wondering, was this the end of days? You know, is, is this the second coming? And people feared, amen? And so then we see the fires and we see the major earthquakes. We see the major hurricanes and we have experienced tornadoes. Uh, we are seeing that great wealth is falling. We are seeing that people are following any wind of doctrine. They're not looking at the truth it's the sound bites that they are, are falling in love with and it's causing divide. The word of God says a house divided cannot stand. 
you know, so we must come together. The word of God says where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst of thee. And so we need to have God in the midst of our decisions. We need to have God in the midst of our, our purpose and our journey and our walk. So that's why we're taking this time out in 10 days to reflect and to understand. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10, it states this, verse 10 through 12. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth. In the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like a robe. You will roll them up like a garment. They will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. So here in Hebrews, it tells you again that God created the heavens and the earth. So the the word Rosh Hashanah is the time to re reflect on the fact that God made this earth and made man. Amen. And so we have to uh, make sure that we are ready. Um, let's look at Rev Revelation chapter four, verse uh, one. After this, I looked and behold, and this is John um, uh, uh, talking. After this book, I looked and behold, a door standing open in the heaven and the first voice, which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this? And this is where he saw uh, the seven angels and the seven churches. Amen. Hallelujah. So then let's look at uh, Revelations verse eight. Uh, I'm sorry, Revelations chapter eight, verses one through 13. When the lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God and the seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with the golden censer and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashings of lightning and earthquake. People, we have to get serious about God. You know, so it talks about the first angel, the second angel, the third angel, and the different um, angels that blew the trumpets and the seven churches, amen? So we have to realize that God is doing something different. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. The seven angel blew his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, uh, thank you um, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations rage, but your wrath came and the time for the dead to be judged and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was open and the Ark of the Covenant was seen within his temple. There were flashes of lightnings, rumblings, peals of thunder and earthquake, uh, earthquake and heavy hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to realize that in the New Testament, there is great talk about the sounding of the trumpets. And we have to understand that when the trumpets are sound, you know, that's why we reflect. Will you be ready? You know, we have been so busy teaching you how to prosper, uh, teaching you, um, you know, about joy and hope and grace. But we have to realize there is a season that God will judge us. 
And that's why we have to be careful when you say, don't judge me. That's not scripture. That's not scripture. It says, judge not unless ye be judged. And so that means that you, you can be mentored. You know, so if you take correction as being judgmental all the time, then reflect right now. Have you changed on that correction from last year that you took this spirit of offense? Because if there's no growth there, then how are you going to know when God is coming? You're going to believe every wind of doctrine. You're going to want anything that's going to make you feel good. Now, let me make sure you understand that when you take this 10 days of cleansing and purifying and coming before the Lord, saying, God, you know, I thank you that you spared me. Uh, thank you, Lord, that that you you put food on my, my table, clothes on my back. You know, I don't have any children in jail. I still have a job. That you start giving thanks and a testimony that the blood of the lamb is your testimony. Once you begin to give your testimony, that you're going to start seeing that you're going to be free from any guilt and any pain and any unforgiveness, any... Uh, uh, any sins, because you have to realize that we cannot pay for our sins through deeds, that Jesus paid it all. But what we can do is we have to make sure that we don't have what's called a reprobate mind, meaning that we say we believe, but you don't do anything that a believer would do. You know, so when we look at Rosh Hashanah, that, that the Jewish people have obedience in what they do with all the seven feasts. They're in the Old and the New Testament. You know, Passover is in the New Testament. And I know I'm gonna make some saints mad, but Good Friday is not in the word of God, okay? So, so we have to realize that, you know, Passover is what Jesus was, the Passover lamb. And so Passover comes before Easter. And I use the word Easter because that's what we, we use so that to me, non-believers will understand what Easter is. But when they come into the household of faith, then I teach the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so if I start with resurrection as an unbeliever, they're not gonna understand. The Bible says to, to you know, God will meet you where you are. So if, if you uh, love uh, Easter and dressing up in the Easter outfit, so be it, I did it as a kid but I know that the Easter is not about the Easter bunny. It's about Jesus died on the cross and rose on the third day. So right now we have to reflect on uh, our salvation, making sure that we are saved for real, uh, that we don't take offense. Um, you know, so for example, you're living an alternate lifestyle, but you want to quote scripture to the pastor and there's no change. That's a Jezebel spirit. Um, you are addicted to something, but you think, oh, okay, God forgives me. You know, he's going to meet me where I am at. That is correct. But why shorten your life by allowing Satan to use you? So this is a time to reflect. God will forgive you for everything. There's so many people on death row that are Christians. Okay. So that um, they've repented of their sin. The only um, sin that, that you cannot repent for is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, saying that you do not believe in the Holy Spirit. So, so we want to close out in prayer to make sure that we understand why we are doing this. So I gave you all, there's so many scriptures in the Bible about the sound of the trumpet. And so in the Old Testament, and there's so many in the New Testament, you know, look at Revelations. You know, we as pastors, we don't preach Revelations like we should. And this is the time that we need because look at the divide, not only of the United States of America, but of the world and how we've gotten caught up into worldly things. But we have to set aside, it's just 10 days. The number 10 is for perfection to introspect and to look at our lives over the past 12 months. And what do we want God to do? What can we give up to the Lord? Amen. So I wanted to make sure you understand the scriptures regarding as a Christian, what the sounding of the trumpet means. That when, when God comes, the second coming of Christ as Christians and the twinkling of an eye, 
that uh, the dead shall rise first and those that are still alive will be caught up in a cloud. And so we have to realize that when we say we believe, that's where we are walking into eternal life, that we will not be cast down to hell with fire and brimstone. Some people say, I don't care about hell. That's because, you know, if you think about, will you set your finger on fire? That's probably air conditioning compared to what hell will feel like because there will be gnashing of teeth, meaning that there will be no rest. You're not going to sleep, that there will be demons just taking over you and just taunting you all the time. That's why when I deal with deliverance and people who are a demon possessed or some kind of demonic stronghold or system of demonic operation, they will tell you that they're being uh, taunted by demons, that they're talking to them all the time. So that means that uh, they've been caught up into some type of witchcraft normally is what it is, or are serving two masters, or they went to a church that they thought was a deliverance church and then demons jumped on them. So you have to be careful with playing with um, deliverance and things like that. You have to know that the, the person that's praying over you is praying the word of God, you know, not a uh, prophet lying, but prophesying the word that's already written by Jesus, by written by a uh, God almighty in the name of in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what we must remember. Hallelujah. 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 So we must introspect, reflect, and that's why uh, these next seven days of, of, of prayer and awe is going to be prayers of repentance in specific situations. But what I wanted to do for uh, the, uh, the first two live days, Saturday and Sunday, and whenever you read this or whenever you review it, the fact is that you need to understand Rosh Hashanah from a Jewish perspective, a Hebrew perspective, as well as we being Christians, how does it relate to us and the second coming of Christ and sounding the trumpet? Amen. So uh, praise God. I thank you for joining us this morning. Remember, you can always give an offering at uh, paypal.me slash abundant season or use your cash app, uh, donate. A-S-A-M-I, and we will be happy uh, to receive an offering. And remember, the offering is, is unto the Lord. You know, uh, I covered, and make sure you see the first video where it says, uh, you know, there are scriptures that saying that we provide an offering. Don't forget that we are still fasting fresh uh, and cooked fruits and vegetables. You can have rice, legumes, and lentils, uh, beans, amen. Uh, you can have non-dairy products. You can have nuts and seeds. You can have juice, coffee, and water. So uh, the only bread you can have is with communion, which we will have communion now. Praise God. And also, if you give an offering, we will send you a, a communion cup directly from Israel directly from Israel, and I'd love for you to have this. Okay, so remember, you can also send your offering to 643 Troy, T-R-O-Y Street, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. Giving God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And so as communing with God is basically part of where we're saying we are surrendering our food, um, our body, um, our mind, our thoughts, anything held captive that we're surrendering this morning. Hallelujah. Giving God all the honor and the praise. So when Jesus was speaking to the disciples in the upper room, he took the, the bread and gave thanks and then he broke it. He said, take and eat. Uh, this is my body, which is broken. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Then he took the cup and again, he gave thanks. He said, this is my blood. This is the new covenant. My blood that was shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. As often as we eat the bread and drink the wine, 
we do it in remembrance of Jesus dying on the cross. It is our covenant with him. One of the things um, that the Bible does not say is you do it every first Sunday. Even though we as churches, we do it, uh, you know, the first of the month, we normally have it Saturday and Sunday because we have Saturday service and Sunday service. We have Saturday service to remember the Sabbath day. And then Sunday is called the Christian Sabbath, okay, which is men mentioned in the book of Acts, not the word Christian, but uh, the saints came together at least uh, the first day of the week. Hallelujah. And Sunday is the first day of the week. So we need to understand our word and understand our power. But take this time to reflect. Take this time to forgive yourself. God is not going to beat us up. But you know what you're really doing? You're taking time to have a conversation with God, which is prayer. You're taking time to surrender all, and God will love this. You're taking time to give to God, to build the kingdom of God. You're taking time to set goals. And so remember, if you wait until December 31st, you're just going into another day. And and, and that next, uh, actually, uh, uh, 10 seconds before the new year, you're not going to change. You have to begin to work on that change way before you get to January 1st, 2021. So that's why I love to celebrate God's new year, which is the year of our Lord of 5781, which is our 2021 year, 90 days before, because it gives me time to reflect um, on all the greatness of God and the power of God and how he saved us and how we need to pray for certain things. So I will have certain categories. So join us and I will write down uh, the uh, the phone number. And some people mentioned that they weren't able to get on that line. I will also have an internet a phone number that you can get on, that you can click on through the internet and you should be able to dial through a website. But we want to make sure anybody that's trying to get on the prayer call can get on the prayer call. Amen. So that's the number one thing. So the prayer calls are going to be on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. And on Monday, we will have Minister Monique Lampkin on the line from Houston. And she is a powerful prayer general. And so she will be praying on Monday night instead of me. So make sure you join the call. Praise God. So I am going to pray us out. I pray some uh, 30, some 60, uh, some 100, some thousand fold return on your offering, especially during this 10 days of awe. You should be in a spirit of expectation for double for your trouble. Uh, you shall have whatever you say. Uh, be truthful, walk in truth, and the truth will set you free. God bless you and keep you. So, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us. Father God, we pray that your face will shine upon us during this 10 days of awe. Father God, open our hearts and let us receive more of you and less of ourselves. Father God, let us decrease so that you can increase. Father God, let us look at the hard things in life that we've ignored and hard hurts and things that we've called scars that are really just scabs, oh, Father God, that once uh, uh, there's healing, the scab just fall out, falls off, just like the scales that fell off Paul's eyes once he was blind, and now he could see, uh, not just naturally, but he could see spiritually. So, Father God, let us not take ownership of things that we need to give to you that causes familiar spirits and lingering spirits to continue the pain and hurt. Father God, we pray for those that are struggling with hurt and things that they've been dealing with with decades. But I plead the blood of Jesus that, Father God, that there will be a testimony of, of past hurts and past wrongs and where people are healed from their scars. So we thank you, oh, Father God, that as we leave uh, this live broadcast, but not your presence, that you will continue to help us to live in power to live in your light and Father God, to make disciples and understand that you are coming back again and you will sound the trumpet. And Father God, let us be ready, not in deeds, but how you have told us and commanded us 
to go make disciples, how you have commanded us to be baptized and believe so that we wouldn't be damned. This is all the New Testament. So, Father God, let us walk in our power. Let us be about worship and let us be about the word of God and let us be about calling out your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, giving all the glory and praise. You have a great day and stay in power.